very similar haircut to my grandma right now, and then I realized how much I look like my grandma. Oh. <laughs> Hey, it's Sue and Megan, the Spine Breakers, and today we're going to do a little bit of a haul. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we've done a haul in a while. It's been a while. We haven't been buying as many books. Also, I have bought some books from Book Outlet, but I never hauled them. I so. have been trying really hard not to purchase books yeah, because same. I have enough of them. Same. But there was a library sale yeah. that Megan went to. Yeah. I didn't because it just didn't end up working out. For me, I was like schedule. gonna go Saturday and I didn't. <coughs> and then Sunday, I was like, eh, it'd be pointless by the time I got there. But anyway. it was almost pointless by the time I went there. Like, there was a, a bunch of shit sold, like, just gone. Really? Yeah. Um, well, there's one of my favorite bookstores in town is sadly closing. However, it's because the owners are retiring, so, so like, I mean, good for them. Yeah. But <laughs> But they're closing, so they're um, they're still gonna be open for like a couple months. But they're trying to get rid of all their stock, so they're having um, sales right now. So I went there yesterday and got some books. So we're gonna show you those books. Show you what it's we a got. used book haul. Hell yeah! Well, I have three new books in here because I got oh right some books for my niece and my nephew because they're having a hard time getting into reading. So I got them some books, and we're gonna drink. Some King Sue, which I had to. Well, my boyfriend gave me this one can of it because he <laughs> bought a four pack, and I was like, "You have to give me a can because I'm King Sue." Um, <laughs> I'm King Sue. <laughs> but I just had to try it because of the name, and I think this is a limited release from Toppling Goliath Brewing Company, uh, which is in. Now I can't remember. Last time I was, we said this, I was like, I don't know how to say it. I think it's Decora. Someone told me that was the okay. right way. Iowa. Okay. I think. Yeah. Decora. We'll go with that. Correct us if Hopefully we're wrong. either that or it was Decora. I think it was Decora. But <laughs> one of the two. Um, it's a double India pale ale. I think Pseudo Sue is a pale ale. Right? I think I think so. Or is it an IPA? I think it's a uh, pale ale. See now I can't remember. But this is King Sue. King Sue. So it's um and it says <clears throat> that it's a lusciously hazy double IPA. Gains its bold flavors of mango, orange, and pineapple from the use of the delicious citra hop. All hail the king. All hail the king, Sue. Should we show us pouring it? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know how interested anybody is in the beers we drink. <laughs> that's We just do it anyway. We do it anyway because that's what we do. Drink beer and talk about books. Well, let's do this. It's very it's hazy. It's quite hazy. Cheers. Oh. It's not as um, strong as I thought it would be. No, I actually like that. Yeah, That's it's pleasant. pretty good. Mm -hmm. You can taste, I think, like the kind of mango, the fruity, the citra flavors. Yeah. But they're not super strong. Mm -mm. And it's not so hoppy that I want to rip my tongue out. Right. Yeah, so. it's pretty good. Yeah. I like. Wow, that's really hazy. It is. So I will start, I suppose, with the books I got at the library sale because I got those first. So I got a copy of The Stepford Wives by Ira Levin, which I've never actually read this book. I've seen the, the movie like with Nicole Kidman in it. Um, Me too. But I've never read this. So it was written in the 70s, I think. Yeah, 72. So I figured it would be interesting to read. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I got a few classics from authors that I've read before and enjoyed. Um, the first one is Pied Piper by Neville oh. Shoot. Uh, I've read On the Beach by Neville Shoot and I really loved it. I have not read A Town Like Alice. Mm -hmm. I always forget if it's A Town Like Alice or A Town Called Alice, but I think it's like. I think it's like Alice. Um, <clears throat> but I keep meaning to read that. This is a, also a World War II novel. I think both of those are also World War II. Was On the Beach a World War II novel? It was a war-ish novel. Yeah. I mean, it was like a war apocalypse novel. I'm pretty sure A Town Like Alice is a World War II novel, but so this is set in France after Dunkirk. Um, it's about a man who risks death and danger to lead a band of homeless refugees through war-shattered Europe. So hmm. I thought I'd try it out because I really liked uh, On the Beach, so why not? Yeah. <laughs> Um, next 
next I got, and then, so this is, I'll just start. So this is Transhuman by Ben Boba. And I bought it because it says that, well, it sounded interesting, but then it also said that Ben Boba is a six-time winner of the Hugo Award. And uh, it says, so this dude has an eight-year-old granddaughter who has a brain tumor, and it's inoperable. So he wants to try a new experimental therapy on her. So I think he, he abducts her to take her to a private research lab. Then I was reading that this got like really mixed reviews and it didn't have great reviews on Goodreads, but I think it, I think it was this one that it said, um, that, uh, every, there's a female doctor in here that like everyone wants to rape. Oh. And I'm like, oh, that's, yeah. Yikes. And I think it was him that it said that he has a weird thing with race. I'm pretty sure oh. it was him. So, so it might be a hate read. It might be a hate read. <laughs> um, so we'll see what happens. I'm going to read it and then we'll see how bad those pieces are in it. Okay. But yeah, I didn't know until after I bought it. And I was like uh, looking them up on Goodreads and I'm like, oh, how about that? Uh, so next one I got is Nine Stories by J.D. Salinger. I'm one of those people who loves The Catcher in the Rye. So I've been wanting to read um, more of his works anyway, and they had this and they also had a copy of Franny and Zoe, but like you can see that this one's like kind of gross looking. <laughs> Franny and Zoe was really gross looking oh, <laughs> to the no. point that I was like, I think that's even a little too gross for me, because usually stuff like that doesn't really bother me, but I'm like, I, it was questionable. Oh, so sketch. I decided not to get that copy of Franny and Zoe. <laughs> I did get nine stories, and those are short stories. Uh, next, I got Deadlands by Benjamin Percy, but it is a thriller, a post-apocalyptic reimagining of the Lewis and Clark saga. So a super flu and nuclear fallout have made a husk of the world that we know, which honestly is all that I read. And I was like, yeah, that'll work. Um, but it takes place in St. Louis. So uh, the next one I have is Nothing Like the Sun by Anthony Burgess. And I honestly just saw Anthony Burgess and grabbed it because I was like, I liked Clockwork Orange, yeah. I liked The Wanting Seed, yep. might as well try out Nothing Like the Sun. <laughs> um, but so I didn't even look at it till I got home. But it's apparently a uh, about William Shakespeare's love life. Oh my! And I I'm, I'm assume it's like a fictional uh, portrayal. It says he Anthony Burgess has dared to recreate the private life and loves of the greatest genius in English history, Will Shakespeare. It says Will. I mean, that's a lot of familiarity. It also is pretty lofty <laughs> yeah. flame there, so. So, yeah. to be honest, I haven't read much Shakespeare, but hopefully I'll enjoy this. Yeah, that's how it's interesting regardless. <clears throat> can you imagine, like, dating Will Shakespeare? I feel like I'd just be like, dude, can you shut the fuck up? <laughs> like, light beyond what yonder window, shut up. Like, yeah. can you maybe do the dishes and stop talking? Although, I mean, his works were actually considered kind of crass, weren't they? I think so. Well, and he would make up words, too, yeah. so I think that was not necessarily respected until, like, later on. He just seems like he'd be exceptionally verbose. Maybe. Some people say he didn't even write the shit. Oh, that's true. <laughs> also, some people think he was gay. Oh, but I had not heard that one. Or maybe bi. Interesting. But some people definitely think that he fancied men. I like the word fancied. Yeah. So next up I got Before the Fall by Noah Hawley, um, and this is like a, I think it's a thriller, which I don't usually get, but this is about a plane crash, and I think there's just two survivors, and um, there may be some kind of sinister work at play that is responsible for the plane crash, but it's like an artist, I think, and a, yeah, like a painter and a four-year-old boy, apparently, are the only two survivors of this crash. Uh, the next one I got was Twilight Sleep by Edith Wharton. Um, again, I've read The House of Mirth and Summer by Edith Wharton and really enjoyed both of them. They had a lot of her books, um, but I just got this one for now. I might go back and get more. They also had a really old one from like, that was probably published. Hell, it might have, surely it wasn't a first edition, otherwise it probably would have been more expensive. But it was weird because the tag, the price tag said it was $9, which is a little expensive, but, mm -hmm. um, but it said cash only. And I was like, why? That's weird, <laughs> yeah. Know. So I didn't get it because I didn't have $9 in cash, but 
I thought that was strange. That's bizarre. But I might go back and get it at some time, but I'm like, why cash Why cash online? Cash online? Is this just kind of shifty? Is, is this something shady? shady? Yeah. Um, but Twilight Sleep is um, about something. <laughs> it's about a thing that happened in the twilight. <laughs> yeah. And you're sleeping. Right. So this says it's a satirical novel of the jazz age. Um, it's about the extended family of um, Mrs. Manford. It says they're determined to escape the pain, boredom, and emptiness of life through whatever form of twilight sleep they can devise or procure. So, I don't know. Sounds, sounds like it's about drug use, y'all. <laughs> We're just doing reckless shit. Reckless shit. So I was pretty excited to find this one because I think it'll be kind of cool. This is Chernobyl by Frederick Pohl. Um, and Frederick Pohl is fairly prolific. Yeah. I own a couple of his books, but I've not read them. I own one of his books, I think, but I haven't read it yet. I'm really pissed off about this sticker residue on the cover. Like, this on the dust jacket. Like, that's fucked up. Um, but this is just a fictional, uh, like, historical alternative fiction, I guess. No, not really alternative. Just historical fiction about Chernobyl. And the people who lived there at the time of the, you know, nuclear disaster. All right, so now I have some genre fiction. Uh, the first one I got was a horror novel called The Moon Child Ooh. by Kenneth McKinney. Spooky. And this is just, I mean, it sounds kind of like not that unique because it's just about a child who dies and then maybe he's not dead, but he's evil now. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> so it sounds very kind of... Uh, Pet cemetery ish mm -hmm. but I don't know I thought it might be a fun read and I liked the little creepy boy on the cover Spooky child. also it looks like someone sliced into it oh because you know sometimes you open a box and, and there's no barrier you just accidentally slice, slice into, into the top item I think this might have been at the top of a box of books because someone, just someone taped the cover and there's <laughs> like a slice through the front first page um, so then the next three books I got I got for my niece and my nephew because I got their report cards and they're both like reading was like their lowest achieving subject so I got some books by James Dean so I got yeah wow. Pete the cat goes plays goes trick-or-treat plays trick-or-treat oh the Pete the cat <laughs> trick-or-treat I don't know maybe you need to work on your reading too <laughs> trick or trick or Pete is what it says <laughs> it's fucking me up y'all um, this is not a channel for children. Um, but yeah, it's like a fun little lift, lift the flappy book. It's cute. Yeah, and I guess my nephew does really dig Pete the Cat, so he may enjoy that. Uh, my next book is a sci-fi called The Alien Dark by Diana G. Gallagher. And this is about a race of cat-like beings who want to colonize a new planet. Um, so they find this planet to colonize and um, discover a dead civilization. Hmm. I don't know. Sounded interesting. I also yeah. like this furry <laughs> cat cat Rat. paw, I guess, on the cover. And I always like, you know, I always like to buy sci-fi that's by women. Yeah. Um, so I thought I'd check it out. Sounds like a good time to me. Yeah. Um, so next, I got this book called Seeds in Trees by Brandon Walden, illustrated by Kristen and Kevin Houdschel. I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> um, but this is about the power of words. And my niece... illustrations a lot. They're really pretty. Like, they're really beautiful illustrations. And my niece just wants to do math all the time, and she doesn't understand why reading is important. So I thought, and her mom and I were talking to her about the power of words the other day, so I thought I would try to find a book about the power of words. Well, so. I wish I liked doing math. I'd be making a lot more money now. <laughs> yeah. Math sucks. Like, I really hate math, so probably good for her, but. So. <laughs> well, my last book is another sci-fi called Water Witch, and it is by Cynthia Felice and Connie Willis, which I've heard of Connie Willis before. Um, you've read uh, Black. What was that? Blackout. Blackout. Mm -hmm. You've read that. I have Doomsday Book by her, but I haven't read it. But um, this is about. It's set on a planet, a desert planet, uh, as dry as Doom. It says, um, and there are these people called water witches who can um, sort of sense water. Um, and then I guess there's this one 
girl who her father's trying to like move her toward power. Oh. <laughs> but oh, no. I don't know. I thought it sounded interesting. That sounded interesting. Connie Willis is a pretty good writer. I liked Blackout. I have the second book in that series, and then I have like To Say Nothing of the Dog, which is also a time travel mm -hmm. novel by her. Yeah. So I have a collection of like short stories by her. Or it's like three novellas, I think, or something. Oh. Um, called Terra Incognita, but it says under her name, winner of two Nebula Nebulas and a Hugo Award in a single year. Damn girl, you had a banner so, year. Yeah. So lastly, I just got a coloring book called I Am Confident, Brave, and Beautiful, which is a coloring book for girls, and they just have like affirmations on them, like I am powerful, I am creative. Um, there was one I really liked. I think it was toward the end. I am tenacious gonna say I'm a badass bitch I'm a badass <laughs> bitch you don't take no shit off of nobody <laughs> but yeah so I thought this was a cool little coloring book yeah it's cute yeah yeah so that's our book haul that's our haul y'all <laughs> that's our haul y'all our haul y'all so let us know uh, if you've read any of these or if you thought any of them sounded interesting or if any of them are terrible or... Yeah, let me know what? if you guys have heard anything weird about transhuman, like if there's weird race stuff in there. Yeah. Um, and I like this beer. It's pretty good. Yeah, it is pretty good. I, I did. I always expect double IPAs to be like extra bitter. Yes, but me too. I don't too. think that's really what that means. I was is just it? expecting I'm them to really be sure so what happy that, means. that like my face falls <laughs> off. Yeah, and it doesn't say what percent ABV it is, because I was like, maybe it just means it's a higher ABV, like an Imperial. But I've heard of Imperial IPAs, too. Yeah, I guess we can just Google. Uh, or I'm what not... does double IPA mean? Well, I was just going to pull that beer up on untapped and see oh. what the ABV was. Well, I'm going to Google double IPA. We're going to both do some investigating. Okay, this says double IPA is also called Imperial IPAs. Ah. Um, this uniquely American style takes the craving for hops and runs with it. These usually use double or even triple the typical amount of hops, but also add more malts to balance. The resulting beer has huge hoppy highs and deep malty depths with a high ABV to match. Okay, so I would think it would taste hoppier, but I guess they balance it, so what's the point? <laughs> right, so why would you do this? Uh, the ABV is like 7.8%. Okay, that's a little high. And I got... Three badges <laughs> from it. So. <laughs> yeah, it's good though. I it like is it. good. I dig it. Yeah. So that was our haul. Thank you for watching. Yeah, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.